allow me to talk on matters that are usually rather difficult to talk about. S sexual needs. I've had a long life. I'm 75. Um, yes. Uh, let me pause a minute before I start on this. Heavenly Father, help me to deal with this subject sensitively, but well, in a way that will be a blessing and a help. Love you, Lord. Thank you. I've come to love God. I found when my um, first wife, she was a very good soul, very uh, high integrity, great blessing to me. Um, I found her attractive. I mean, physically, I realized uh, when I held her in my arms before marriage, this is all I need. I don't need more than this. This is just lovely. Going to be good to this lady. Good in in the ways that I understand to be kind and loving and caring. And I was. I'm so glad God had me be so. We made love. Uh, obviously, as you can understand, I mean, we have a child, so we must have made love. But you know, she had an upbringing that was. Um, well, very discreet about sexual matters. And uh, really, well, it wasn't her scene. <laughs> but I loved her. And I thought, well, I have needs, but... I don't need that much. I shall, uh, I shall not trouble her, I just, I mean, we'd sleep in the same bed, but um, increasingly we didn't uh, um, have sexual activity, put it that way. Mind you, I was a young man, I was a bit younger than that, by about five years. And uh, I think we got married at mm, uh, 24, 25. I was. So she'd been about 30. So, well, I don't know if it's uh, youth or health or what, but needs that sometimes uh, overwhelm a man. Um, so as not to be a, a burden on her, I was not. At times I would resort to um, uh, a few secret uh, pin-ups, you know, uh, what you would call, um, oh, forgotten the word, hang on. Yeah, pornographic, nothing extreme of course, but needed to look at the lady undressed, didn't I? As a man needs a woman. And I didn't want to burden my wife with such needs. So that seemed reasonable. Now, other times it didn't seem reasonable. Uh, because I I'd become Christian um, in 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 a fairly traditional way, you know, as a Baptist church and so on. I'd been baptised. Uh, we were both in earnest. I'm not a great conformist, as you may have gathered from my um, recordings, and I, I I've never been a great conformist in that sense. In, in many ways. And and for most of our married life together, we were together 18 years. Um, well, 
I just kept sexual needs to a minimum. And, um, mm, it was all right. It was all right when she was loving me. And if she stopped loving me, then it all seemed pointless. And, uh, I, I probably indulged rather more in, uh, um, meeting my needs, um, pictures, undress ladies, you know. Nothing too vulgar, you understand. Not, or not at all vulgar, in fact. No, never like that. Um, but something that... Well, I wasn't entirely happy. Sometimes I was happy about it, sometimes I wasn't. Um, well, and I kept it to a minimum. Yeah. My second wife, well, gosh, she was in love with me, and I was in love with her. My first wife, we loved each other. It was different to being in love. We realized we weren't in love, but we were loving each other for most of the 18 years, I feel. With my second wife, oh, goodness. Ah. Oh. It was love, and she was as generous as a woman can be, absolutely wonderful, as regards making love, and as regards loving. And, uh, well, I had no needs to worry about, I mean, goodness, I just felt, well, it's not fair, these poor chaps who don't have someone make love to and they have needs and my view then was quite simply well if they turn to um, pornography and and masturbation well oh bless them my that's what they need and I understand that that's okay that was my understanding my view that I'd been so privileged to have someone who was just loving me flat out and I loved and other poor souls don't have that. Oh my goodness. May we be so understanding and loving in, in appreciating how they try to meet their needs if they and, and that's just it's not something God is unhappy about. That was my view. And still is, I think. Well, when your partner stops loving you, I mean, the second marriage lasted 18 years as well. And she didn't stop loving me until much very near the end, you know, last year, a few years, a couple of years perhaps. Then of course the life becomes difficult again and you feel, well, what am I being true to? This person doesn't love me, doesn't want me. Doesn't want to spend time with me anymore. I'm not their joy. What am I being faithful to? Do you see, life starts to lose all meaning. It's a terrible tragedy when that happens. Whether you're a man or woman, it's a terrible tragedy when that happens. I mustn't linger on it, I'll get upset even today. Even these days, I mean, I would get upset if I put my mind to that. So I don't go down that road of thinking of such things. Of course, um, my third wife came into my life and she just fell for me. What a sweetheart. Absolutely loved her to bits, and she absolutely loved me to bits. I've been so un incredibly blessed. I couldn't reproach any person for who's not <laughs> blessed with a lovely partner, one that loves them. I couldn't reproach them for 
turning to other solutions. It's so easy to be noble when you've got someone who loves you. Whether it's my first wife and I had to be noble by absolutely minimizing any sexual needs, or whether it's my second and third wife where well, they just loved me full on, and I love them full on. I had no needs to be worried about. No needs. So easy to be faithful then, isn't it? Am I going to condemn those that have, don't have such blessings? No way. And if I don't condemn, how much more, my God? My wonderful dad who understands all things and allows all that he allows because he loves us. Not holding back his condemnation and wrath. Oh, that's an appalling view of my God. It's slanderous and I won't have it. My God is a wonderful, compassionate, loving dad. Just like my mum. <laughs> I didn't know dad very well. My dad, well, there you go. The failings I thought I saw in him, I'm all the clearer on how wonderful my understood view of God is. And I wouldn't change it for the world. I love him to bits. And I loved mum as I loved mum to bits. I was greatly blessed. Didn't have much of a relationship with dad, but a fantastic relationship with mum. We were ever. Her view was to be a good friend, a perfect friend. She should have been a perfect mum, but, well, she was a perfect mum as well as I understood it. But her understanding was she was to be a friend, always there to help, always a blessing. Bless her. Where was I? Let me review this, um, what I've recorded stuff so far. Oh, I didn't listen to much of it. I just remembered something I wanted to say. Look. Now I don't have a partner at all. I don't quite live alone because I share a house with four other blokes, but they're all Christian. They range from 23 to my age, which is going to be 75 in a few days on the 14th of June. And the year now is 2022. Yes, I, in a sense... I'm a single man now. Um, do I find sexual needs demanding on me? No. Is it because I'm 75? No, it's not. I didn't find it demanding on me when I was a young man with my first wife. Um, and not in general. It needed accommodation when I really felt she didn't love me. And I didn't know what to do. When she stopped loving, I mean... We weren't ever in love. But we were so earnest in loving. And when she stopped loving, I didn't mind her stopping making love in the sense that, well, I, I thought it was unreasonable, but... Yeah, I did feel it was unreasonable, but then I understood her and I thought, well, she can't help that and I don't want to be a burden on her. And I wasn't. And it didn't trouble me either. You know, I didn't, ha in the bulk of time, I did not have to turn to something like pornography. It just was not an issue. And I find the same now. So I don't think it's age or, you know, poor health or lack of vitality. I could, um, yes, well, I, I won't go into it, but I, I, I can certainly feel attracted to and, and have a need for um, a lady, 
and sex if I allowed my mind to, but I don't wish to and I don't. I'm not quite happy with that. Would I have another wife if someone turned up that loved me and wanted to be my wife? Oh, I'm pretty sure I would love that. But I'm not pressingly needing such. I understand this because God is sufficient for me, more than sufficient for me. The relationship I have with God at the minute doesn't seem to leave me with that sort of need that has to be met. You know, I'm not registering with dating agents or something like that, or, you know, I'm just... It's not an issue. In large measure. But of course I have a man. <laughs> and if you've had my life, well, you can understand if it doesn't occur to me, that it does occur to me, or oh, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> that I just like to have someone that loves me and someone to always be there, someone to love, to be with, someone to care for. I won't go down that road because in my mind, because we can create needs. I don't wish to create the need. If the need's there, well, I deal with it in 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 uh, a sense of I might turn it over to God and just say, uh, "Not this isn't going to bless me. This is it, Lord. Can I just leave this thought? Come back to focusing on Your goodness and Your all sufficiency of being. That really, I just need loving company and." Surely I can find that in you. All I need, love you. Yes. So that's how I find my my estate now. <laughs> Good job, isn't it? <laughs> you could say, well, it's force of circumstances. Yeah, okay, well, it might be, but it's, it's a blessing. <laughs> it's... It's wonderful. I've never, never had such a lovely time with God as in these past few years. And it's not that I haven't had much time with God before, whether married or single. From the age of 24 onwards, I've been very occupied the relationship with God. And I find it's closer than ever it's been. A lot closer. And it was close before, I thought. But now it's pretty close to being wonderful. <laughs> and just knowing God, this is life eternal. To know thee. And it's knowing thee in the way that the understanding of this Jesus story gives one, I think, by the Holy Spirit within us. It's such a, use a very weak word, I would say, such a consolation. To use a strong word, I'd say it's such a joy and passion. Passion has bad connotations to that word now, isn't it? Well, strip it of the bad connotations, but imagine the word passion in all its goodness. Only, and purity. And you got something of the relationship with God. A joy of being in love with God. 
It's lovely to fall in love with God. I do commend it to you, to bless you. Look, don't worry if you have sexual needs. And honestly, don't worry even if you've gone too far as you understand it. God is bigger than any problem you might feel you have. When you appreciate his loving kindness to you, not his judgment, not his criticism, he's not a worldling out to judge, punish, criticize, dominate, consume, use, misuse. And you know that, you don't need me to tell you that, do you? He's a kind dad his arms are ever open to receive us back into his embrace. Because he sees the end from the beginning. He knows how wonderful you are in eternity. And nothing's going to stop him anchoring you in that for eternity. That's what this universe is, as I understand it. The place in which we come into life eternal. And life eternal I maintain against all <laughs> conceivable rationality you might think. Is continuous not just into the future but the past. And through the whole of the present. Eternal is eternal. Without beginning and without end outside of time, in fact. In the dimensions, perhaps, as I understand it, God dwells, and we dwell, in our personhood, which we have very little grasp of, just as we have very little understanding of God. All we need, though, for life eternal is to know the relationship with God that we should have which is that he is our loving, heavenly Father. We, his children. And that he is well able to bring us up to completeness. What we sometimes translate as the word perfection, but really it means complete. Complete even in the sense that he is complete. Isn't that wonderful? We're children of God, you see, he's our dad. And that means we're going to grow into adults like dad. Dad is not just some male figure, you understand. He's heavenly father, divine mother, dearest friend, wonderful one. God, our God. And really, that's so important to us that we will not consider him as anything else. Well, unless he leads us to do so, of course. But it's his life eternal to know thee, the only true God. And Jesus, the way. And by the way, I mean that what's in that story of Jesus is enough to know God. With the help of the Holy Spirit, of course. And by Holy Spirit, I mean the Spirit that's so pure, who speaks only of God, and truly, truly, truly so. God that would otherwise have been unmanifest to us becomes manifest to us in spirit and in truth. We're born again, we're translated, we're, we transcend. 
we dwell in his being, he in us. We move, move into a state of all blessing, eternal blessing. Mm, let me stop a sec. Well, I don't think I need to. I, I just need to just say, look, don't let yourself be held up by the mistakes that you think you've made or are making. There's nothing that can come between you and the love of God. The Christian church, I think, teaches that sin does. Well, it does in that it interferes with your freedom to think somehow of the true goodness of God. You start to see God in a, as a condemning, judgmental being. One for whom you're unworthy of. That's not right. My children are always worthy of my love. Whether they're doing what's right or what's wrong. I choose to love them. It is my choice to love them and to take joy in them that is their strength and will cause them to turn again to me and come home in their consciousness, in their devotion. It is my love for them that will ever call them back into my embrace, by which I mean into their consciousness of my embrace, because I never let go. I'm dad, you see, faithful and true. Father of all, God of all things, nothing could ever have existed for one moment, but for my thinking of such. You know, if to put it in your terms, I hold it all in my mind, my being. And most definitely you included. So, if Marshall has tried to be a good dad, you've been dad a long time, he's got a nine-year-old at the minute, and a 23-year-old, and a 47-year-old, it is. If I've purposed to be a good dad, how much more God? So don't condemn yourself when God does not condemn you. Certainly to seek out that which will be a blessing to you, rather than not. But the real blessing comes from realizing the goodness of God as regards his relationship with you. When you realize he's your loving dad, eternal, loving dad, all-powerful. Well, you found life eternal. Wonderful life eternal. More wonderful than you or I could conceive of. Way, way into what God conceives of. Love you, dad. Love you for loving us, of course. Very selfish of us, isn't it? Self-interested, should I say. But it's a self-interest that seems to blossom into your lovely selflessness. Your love and care. Thank you, Dad. Love you. Thank you, Dad. You do see, don't you? But this is Jesus. When we say Jesus Christ in their ascent, it's this understanding is the way. It comes from this story of Jesus. It doesn't matter whether Jesus is an historical figure. It's utterly irrelevant. It's the truth of what's there that counts. which is that he embodies this ministry, this story, 
that came to tell you that his name is Father, Heavenly Father, Dad, Righteous, Wonderful One. That's what Jesus is. The way, the understanding you need of your true relationship with your God, the only God, the only God you could possibly love. That's the way you're made. You want life, eternal life, joy, peace, hope, goodness, love, loving kindness, abundance, plenty, shalom, peace, wisdom, understanding, all blessing, all goodness. That is the only God you are designed to truly, utterly love and be devoted to. That's the way. That is Jesus. We are Jesus. There's not four persons in us, you know, God the Father, God the Son, and Jesus, and us. Get it right, there's God the Father. There's the Son, which speaks only of him. The Spirit. You know, God the Father is the unmanifest God that manifested all this, all this universe. But God the Son is that being in some sense revealed by the universe. The learning, we're here in a school, it's teaching. We're learning, it's thought. Wow, this spirit speaks only of the unmanifest God and manifests him to us in what way? In giving understanding to the story of Jesus. Which is what, it's not this golden-haired man in blue eyes wandering around Galilee, healing and preaching. It's, it's the truth as such. That he, his ministry, his calling, the reason he was sent. What's, he says, I've finished the work that thou gavest me to do. I've given them your name. They believed me. They've understood in some sense from my teaching what that name is. I'm out of here. Hmm, got carried away, haven't I? Let me pause a second. <laughs> I want this a bit heady to find that you are Jesus, isn't it? I mean, you know, be reasonable. <laughs> it's not what the world or the church has really come up with, is it? Hmm. Hmm. Hang on. Let me resort to a song we sing, I speak Jesus, against the darkness, against every addiction, against every sadness, every sorrow, every wretchedness, every harm, everything that seems to be not of God, I speak Jesus. I speak Jesus to every so-called demon that ever lived or ever would live, ever could be. I speak Jesus. Nothing can exist but for the goodness of God. I speak that consciousness into you, that you might have life eternal. I speak Jesus. And when you understand what I speak, you will know your Heavenly Father. And that is having life eternal. It is who you are already in eternity. Because he is God, he is outside of time. He's made time, space, matter, uncertainty, scarcity, the universe that you see it. 
you, your very self, is made. Wanted family, wanted company, wanted love. Didn't want to just have everything, wanted to share with beings comparable to himself that he could be in true fellowship with. He said, I shall have children, and children he has. You and me. And he will make sure, being a wonderful dad, that we become the fullness that he's chosen us to be in eternity. He's God. And other than him, there is no other. You understand, there is no other. There is only God. But he didn't want to be alone. Do you want to be alone? It's a psychotic mental state, a terrible state. No way. He has an infinite heavenly host. A wonderful family that he abides with forever good company we are for him and to each other. I speak um, beyond my consciousness to bless you. What matters is your relationship with him. Not who he is or how he is or how he came to be or how you came to be, really, except that think of him as your dad. And you've got it right. That's the story of Jesus. That's the way. That's the way. Walk in the way. Walk here. Feel his presence. His loving kindness. It's your dad. You take his hand. You're already in his embrace, but you know, visualize it. It's a good, good, good father. I speak Jesus. <laughs> wow. Hey, it's Sunday. And it's eight o'clock and I've got to be at church at ten. That's plenty of time. I think I've got time to um, change this into some publishable form, you know, uh, mechanically on the computer. And uh, I think my computer's steam driven. It's, it's not that new, I can tell you. <laughs> but it does the job, doesn't it? Wonderful. It was given to me and my son gave it to me. You see, I'm in fellowship with my children. I don't mean he, he lives nearby. But they bless me just as I bless them. Isn't they wonderful? And when my little girl, Nine's pleased to see me, I'm blessed. Oh, she's a love. She's a sweetheart. When she doesn't love me, oh my goodness, the cost is awful. I die up your, oh, what can I do? <laughs> Poor dad. Fancy his daughter treating him this way, but women do, you know. <laughs> I mean, that's the way they are. <laughs> <laughs> One minute they love you, next minute, oh, oh. <laughs> you can't do anything right. <laughs> and we don't mind, because when they are loving us, they are so lovely. We all weather the other time, we just have to sit it out. <laughs> Till she comes back again, bounces back. <laughs> yeah. I got distracted, haven't I? Look, I'm going to finish this recording. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Cause his face to shine upon you, not just upon you, but within you. He dwells in you. May you be in his embrace and know you're in his embrace always. May the Lord give you joy, hope, wisdom, blessing, peace, shalom, every possible blessing, every possible joy. May you know his goodness and his loveliness and have life eternal. Now he's not going to say no to this prayer. You realize that, don't you? 
just like John 17. You read that earnestly and, and try and learn it. It's worth it, you know. If you never did anything else, you'd probably be 99% of the way there just by knowing John 17 truly in your heart. And we might do that. I was like, oh, I'm supposed to be blessing you. Well, I am blessing you. I'm blessing you with John 17. <laughs> Thank you, Heavenly Father. And don't think of him as Father. I know I still use the word. I even say Lord, don't I? But I mean Dad. He's closer than close. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful person with you always. Thank you, Dad.